Hey, hey, welcome to a Wednesday, and what better way to spend lunch, right, is at Carboy, Carboy Winery attached to Logan Street. Guess where? On Logan Street. And a couple of my great friends here with me, Rich O'Brien from Elevation Food Service. Hey, Greg. Hey, all of your kitchen needs. You've got that uh, playground over at Elevation Food Service Reps. Check out elevationfs.com. And also Craig Jones, man, a great friend. Um, just one of the people that I look to for inspiration and to ear to the ground. I call you very often, but here we are in your backyard. It's good to yeah, see you, Greg. Good to see you, Greg. I know. Look good at the lunch you. here. This is delicious. First right. of all, do you, uh, do you get the, the salads and the sandwiches here at Carboy? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, look at that salad there. How fresh that looks. With oh, the, we're doing the splitsies because it's a delicious big salad. Chef Rebecca, she does it right, man. Those are some phenomenal sandwiches. Look at those greens. Greens look great. And what you're going to see today is we're going to look at a tostada bar. Have you eaten at the tostada bar? Here you go, Rich. Thanks, buddy. Have yeah, the, the tostada, tostada bar? Uh, bar is Describe fantastic. it to me because it's going to we're going to come up and do some filming with that. Yeah, Chef Rebecca does kind of like her own spin on tostadas. Uh, some of them are kind of Mediterranean inspired, but she's got the lobster and the Spanish octopus and ceviche and and uh, kind of like Angelo's has its Mollus Monday, we, we want to build our own little special night. So that's Tuesdays where we have live music. You know, we got a guy from Cuba that plays every other Tuesday. And then another guy that's coming in from South America. They just crush it. Uh, wood fire tostadas and, uh, and just hanging out, you know, on the curb and gutter all the way to the edge of the building. is just a blast having all that outside uh, right here in, in Cap Hill. Yeah, uh, lots of special events that you put on your team. It's just I've fallen in love with each and every one of them. But just a, uh, two locations for Carboy. Three. Oh, you got breakfast. Three and a half. Three and a half. That's right. You want to talk about the half real quick? <laughs> the half is uh, is uh, Garfield Winery. He's been around for 21 years. And Carboy will have a soft opening there um, this September. And our grand opening will be the spring of 2000. 22 with the Carboy Winery at Garfield Estates. Wait, you so Garfield Estates, where is that? It's in Palisade. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, right there in Grand Valley. We're right underneath Mount Garfield, and uh, it's pretty awesome that we uh, usually wineries will start out, you know, uh, growing the grapes and then maybe build a taste room in the city. We actually did an urban winery first and went full circle and now we're now we're in palisade and uh you're not growing your own grapes exclusively are you we are you yeah are. that's fantastic yeah we actually went under contract under two vineyards there and uh and and they all are um i think they're some of the first vineyards that were planted in colorado that can actually handle the cold weather not only in in grand valley but they could handle the cold winters in edmonton or calgary uh, for the last 30 years, people have planted Cabernet and Syrah and, and Malbec and Chardonnay. And, and every few years, they tear them out and start over again. This has been going on for uh, quite some time. The leader there is uh, Kaibab Sauvage, mm -hmm. and he's been planting cold, hardy grapes, you know, like Toraldigo and Petite Pearl and Albarino, Viognier, things that can handle this, these, these cold winters. And... Uh, and so Carboy, we're, we're jumping in there. The vineyard that we um, acquired has grapes I, I never even heard of until this year, mm -hmm. like Chamberson, Traminette, Marquette, like Marquette University. Mm -hmm. And and these type of uh, uh, St. Vincent. Where are they indigenous to? Man, they are, these are grapes that, could hand, that, that were uh, American hybrids that could handle Michigan and Canada. It, something else. And so now that we're planting those here, mm -hmm. You know, um, that's exciting to see that I think Colorado uh, vineyards are just going to keep. Uh, You're a wine guy? Yeah, and I was curious. I mean, where, where are the, where's the foundation of these grapes from? I mean, what part of the world are they what just, part of the world? Yeah. Yeah, these uh, American hybrids, you know, I wish Tyzok was with us right now or, or Snap on that, but they both can tell you a lot more, you know, that these these uh, American hybrids were, um, geez, you know, they were, they just survived the cold winters in the Midwest. You know, I guess back in the day, people probably made juice out of them, like grape juice. And, okay. And They've got my DNA. They survive on suffering. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they really do. And, and truly, the Palisade has wonderful climate, I believe. But you'll get cold evenings, really cold in the, and then warm up really hot in the day. Yeah. Right. But what that does for the, for the grapes itself is 
gets that flavor lock going. So you'll get some sweetness in those yep. grapes and all kinds of different things. And I really think Colorado, and with the help of these great minds and Carboy, the brand itself, we're coming up with some really great products, really great products. Um, and starting, you know, California is taking a little look, and that's where you got Tizoc from, right? Got Tizoc from California, and and uh, yeah, no, it's it, Colorado wines drinking really well. There is a half a dozen wineries in Palisade now that are making phenomenal wine, and it's exciting. You know, um, you know, f- five years ago, I don't think you could find Colorado wine on on a list at any of these restaurants here in in Denver, and now you're seeing these. Um, r- restaurant groups that are adding Colorado wine to their wine list. Which, As well they should. I mean, Colorado is such a tight-knit community. Yeah. As you can tell, we like mm-hmm. doing business with each other. Yes. That's the whole um, impotence of the Modern Eater show. Well, and your wines, I, you know, my first opportunity really to drink your wines was last year during the fall dinner series that we had here, and it was just so wonderful. And, I mean, it was, it was I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a fermented anything guy, okay. right? I yeah. mean, if it's fermented, I'll drink it. But um, really special. I mean, really nice wines. And, you know, I know my wife isn't much of a wine drinker, mm-hmm. but, boy, she was sure enjoying sure enjoying yeah. your blend for sure. Nice. So, Fantastic. yeah. yeah. As we kind of take this deep breath and go, oh, my goodness, maybe there is light at the end of the tunnel. People are Please. starting to get vaccinated. Yeah. Things are opening up. Regulations are loosening a little yep. bit. I just want to do the state of the state. What are you facing? What are you seeing right now? What's the climate of which you have to work in with quite a few locations with Angelo's, Carboy, oh, Logan yeah. Street, all together? What are you seeing right now, Craig? You know, just hope, you know, I think we're seeing hope the light it. at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, uh, you, you've heard uh, COVID fatigue. Um, our employees, um, you know, have been wearing these masks eight, ten hours a day. And, and they also have to police that. And, and when you think about having, you know, your servers and hostesses and bartenders, bus personnel asking um, people in the neighborhood and, and tourists to come into your restaurants to put their mask on, put your mask on, put your mask on, it really wears them out, mm-hmm. the staff. And, and, and uh, um, but what do I see right now? I mean, yeah, I see that, that people are... Uh, optimistic and they can see the light at the end of the tunnel we're optimistic that we can get these masks off sooner and later so that um, our staff can go back to you know smiling and Mm -hmm. and uh, having fun with our with our customers I I couldn't agree more and what you know here's what's really interesting is people kind of reformulated their habits during COVID a lot of it was stick around home right and then uh, take out and, and delivery and then some destination spots that we're able to accommodate Destination spots, few and far between, but now more than ever, your local neighborhoods are, need to embrace the restaurants and the small businesses that are in there, and I think that that's the natural progression. Great neighborhood right here in oh, yeah. uh, Governor Park area. But speak on these different areas, cause, and also 6th Avenue with Angelo's, and then in Littleton um, w- with uh, Angelo's and Carboy. But talk about the, the neighborhoods coming together around these brands too yeah it really you know it's each neighborhood has embraced our our restaurants i mean no i mean i guess it it started with angelo's uh on sixth avenue with the lavio family i mean 40 40 to 45 years of being you know an institution in cap hill and and I, i still go back to when we first found out that we had an opportunity to buy angelo's and everybody we talked to said we 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 raised our family in that restaurant I mean, when I say everybody, I heard that four or five different times. And, and Me. All right, you know, I, I took my, my first date, I took to Angelo's, and now we're married with five kids. No, you, you didn't. Know. Really? No, not me, but, you know, you hear, oh. you hear <laughs> I was gonna say. so many regulars. Wow, he's been know, busy. So many, <laughs> you know, people have raised their, I mean, they grew up around Angelo's. So it's a, it's a tight community with Alamo Pasitas and United Capitol Hill Neighborhood Association. But, yeah, people come across you know spear from east west wash park and west wash park and baker and Jerry it has Creek. a cult following and everybody's coming in from all yeah. the surrounding neighborhoods well let's talk about that then because um pre-covid is really when just the launch of logan street and the carboy and kind of the new yeah. branding here you had an opportunity and i don't know what you did but for those that don't know and i think a lot of people do this was governor's park and governor's park had that same cult following right 
Uh, could you have kept on with that? Did you need that? Where, like, how does that stand with, with uh, here at Logan Street? Yeah, this is a little different. I mean, you know, when you take over, like, the Pub on Pearl, you know, it's been around for 30 years, and you just keep it the Pub on Pearl, you know, or you Rocky Top across the street from Regis University, you, you know, keep it the same. Angelo's, don't change a whole lot. Keep keep the old stained glass. Well, the neighborhood glass. wanted you to with that, yeah. right? Did you get that same feedback with, with Governor Park? Well, Gus Park, yeah. I mean, you, obviously, you're kind of, you know, there are a certain percentage of the neighborhood that is sad that, you know, that – that the Angelos family um, mm-hmm. wasn't able to keep Governor's Park the way everybody remembered it before, like with the big nose beers and, you know, the two for one mm-hmm. Long Island iced teas and been here since 1976. I mean, that's heartbreaking, you know, uh, but we didn't, uh, we didn't close Governor's Park down. It, it closed. And then we looked at an opportunity to take, you know, this building that's been here for 110 mm-hmm. years as a creamery for four decades mm. and, and an auto body shop for four decades mm-hmm. and governor's park for three decades now we're here you know and we're like it's uh um you know the I property's guess. never looked as good i mean honestly this property and took <laughs> a lot of work yep. time and resources and money yep. to put together and and obviously a great brand but again with covid wouldn't an inopportune time because you've been trying to cultivate come back in take a look yeah. see what's going on here and once you do you're absolutely hooked. But again, when you just start peeking outside your door again and COVID's kind of coming to an end, yep. you're going back to familiarity. Familiarity, And um, that's where I think that this is the challenge. Like the call to action is come here and check it out. Um, it's great people, great community, great environment. And what I think to be um, a staple of the of the neighborhood for many, many generations to come. Yeah, I sure hope so. We're yeah. we're in it for the long haul, <laughs> you know, and, and Well it's uh, interesting. You saw you remember what happened with Campus Lounge? Like Campus Lounge and then I remember exactly what happened. That's right when we came in here and that scared the crap out of me. Yeah. Keep going. Well, I mean, just obviously you go in and, and you, you, the the neighborhood wants one thing, but yep. you have a different idea of what it should be. And then you put you institute that idea and all of a sudden, it's like a kidney transplant. And if yeah. that if the body doesn't take the kidney, yeah. it's going to reject it. And th- in in my estimation, that's what happened to. Did they change the name of Campus Lounge? You know, they didn't. But they have they, the the owner that took over after you know thirty forty years flipped it within a year, right? And mm-hmm. uh, and I think whoever's in there now has kind of got that Midwest feel, the steaks and the salad yeah. bar and stuff. And I and I've been there pre COVID. I had I had not been back since COVID, so I hope they're doing well. So, and guys, we jump in any time on this, Rich. But well, I, you know what? I was just going to say the the way that this has, has shaped up, and especially you know over Logan Street, it's so warm. People are just going to fall in love. I mean, they really yeah. are when they come in here. And I know with the dinner series again was my first real opportunity, and everybody that we came to together with here just loved it. And I, I you are going to have great success, and I'm super excited for you to get fully open again. So how so how do you jockey for your guests? Is really what what it comes to me is there's so many people that obviously want you to go to their restaurant and yep. bars and and start reformulating what are your what are your habits going to be post covid so special events things like things that you can get out there and you have such a great team that does the uh facebook and instagrams and oh, yeah. and, and getting out and creative events together but that'll be one of the keys to bringing this to be fruition as successful as it possibly can be right absolutely having a campus like this where you vacated uh four property lines um, you know, you had their little real estate office and the house and back, which is where the, the barn was where they used to milk cows mm-hmm. back in the day. Um, you've got Governor's Park. You've got Paradise Cleaners is where we're sitting right now. Um, this, this site is built for events. And when you have a chef like Rebecca Weitzman that's, you know, one chop, been on Iron Chef. It's been on the Food Network with Bobby Flay. And she's out here giving people experiences. Where can you go and taste food that you know like a brazilian uh, street food or food from morocco you know at you know at under thirty dollars where you and the whole place is decorated like you're in rio de janeiro Mm -hmm. they they're they're painting cans and putting together decor and and maggie o'malley you know is uh owner operator here major investor you know just a solid team where they're they're out here doing stuff like old school like how many how many uh, hospitality places in town do you think of that that they're putting on six, seven, eight, nine events a year? You know, for the neighborhood to try f- 
food and uh, and have an experience like the pumpkin fest where you can come in and you know have some pumpkin cocktails and snacks and spend under 20 bucks you know and just being part of the, the neighborhood being part of the community I'm gonna set up a, 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 a question before break I mean, kind of a tough question uh, I mean I don't know how tough it is but it definitely is real um, more and more gaining your guest and you said something very optimal the word experience experience was something very hard to come by in covid mm -hmm. um it, it was just put on the back burner now experiences are going to be everything it's the best time in the world right now for the consumer because these experiencers are going to be coming in so you're going to have to be yep. pretty judicious of how you pick your experience right word on the street is is that some restaurants have kind of gotten this um persnickety kind of entitlement attitude of like oh poor us and, and that that's kind of wearing off at this point in time to where it's like we don't want to hear you whine or crying or we want this experience back and we want to have that clean transaction to be able to come back yes. into your restaurant and i don't want to get much for it now it's tough we talked about covid um what did you call, call the term uh covid uh, fatigue. fatigue absolutely there's that covid fatigue so that's threshold of like okay here we got to get going and pumped up team because we got to be on point with our game and start providing that experience again so how do you change that culture and that mindset if there is that you may not see that internally in in any restaurant right now but let's address that question if you don't mind when we come back you got it. i think it's kind of a cool question all right rich o'brien elevation food service reps we're also going to talk to you rich about the supply chain you got it of what's you know restaurants restaurant tours chefs owners you guys got to listen to Rich because what the call to action is, if you want to get going with the things that you need, you got to plan in advance now, just like anything else in Craig Jones, my spirit guide. We'll be back from uh, Logan Street and Carboy right here on, guess what, Logan Street. That is the Modern Eater Show will continue. Hey. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Brother Luck from Lucky Dumplin', 4 by Brother Luck in Colorado Springs, and I am rocking with the Modern Eater. You're watching them, you're tasting them, you're knowing everything there is to know about Colorado. <laughs> Hi, Charlie from Brews Beers here. Our new Belgian Abbey 4-pack is a mixed package of the four core beers made in Abbey and Trappist breweries in Belgium. So we have a single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple in one package. Now, quadruples are the emperors of Belgian monastery ales. They're dark in color, uh, with a dense tan head, and alcohol ranging from 8 to 12%. So they're pretty strong. Quadruples are very rich and complex, with big maltiness, uh, spice, and flavors of raisins, cherries, and plums. Alcohol is apparent in the mouthfeel, but not overwhelming. Uh, even at 10.5% ABV. So the finish is long, complex, and dry, and they're great beers anytime, by themselves or with hearty foods. Pick up your Abbey 4-pack at either Brews location, 67th and Pencos, or at Colfax and York, and at fine liquor stores throughout the Denver metro area. Take home some Belgian-style badassery today. the outtake version. <laughs> What's up, Denver? I am Chef Natasha Hess, and this is Chef Carrie Baird, and we are at the Ginger Pig. Check us out, gingerpig.com. You can also see us on the moderneater.com. Thanks, everybody. It's cornstarch. I know. It's cool. Right now, let me tell you about Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. He's the man with the plan. When it comes to tap installations and tap maintenance, Jeff Rourke is the most trusted man in the business. 20-plus years family owned and operated, does great work and you might be knocking the rust off of your bar or restaurant and getting things tuned back up. He's the guy to call. If you're pouring in efficient beer, Jay, what are you doing? You're pouring your money down the drain. Uh, money. Don't do that. Uh, foam is money. Get a hold of Jeff Rourke, A Plus Beverage Solutions. Tell him what you need done. He'd be happy to come out and just take a look for you. Here's the phone number to give him a call. 720 272-3809. One more time. 720-272-3809. It's Jeff Rourke in A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Okay. Get back at Carboy. 
just a beautiful Wednesday. And uh, just ramping up to a really great weekend. And people are really starting to plan ahead now. Like, what, what is May going to look like? What's June? I think people are really looking forward to taking the masks off. And uh, opening day Thursday, tomorrow, downtown. That's kind of exciting. People are kind of reformulating how they're doing things. And they're looking for these experiences once again. COVID fatigue. Craig Jones, Rich O'Brien here with us having a great discussion over lunch. How do you get to your servers? How do you get to your cooks? How do you stay, keep them motivated? And will they be able to still expect that, that absorbent tip that's like, I'm going to tip you 100%. Just cause, I think those days are about to vanish. Yeah, those days are gone. Those days are gone? Yep. Yeah, right now. Absolutely. And so you're asking people that have already COVID fatigue or they're getting back yep. into work and knocking the rust off that as owner operators, it's more important than ever for us to be completely on the top of our game yes. and we have to ask you to do that how do you create that culture and it probably starts with just great leadership throughout yeah you just answered the question for okay. me right there i'm sorry <laughs> so it's it's that one word and that's it it's leadership you know uh, leading by example you know having a uh, an owner in place you know uh you know that's the rabbit around the race around mm -hmm. the, around the greyhound track you know that we're setting the pace you think of like the the t you know the independent restaurant tours in this town, and you know why is Sushi Den you know cranking out you know I'm guessing over 15 million dollars a year with Izakai and mm -hmm. Sushi Den. Toshi is rolling rolls you know on the line. Mm -hmm. You know Bobby Stuckey you know having Frosca and Tavernetta. He's he's pouring wine, training his staff. You know every night that he's there, he's popping open a bottle at the end of their shift leading by example leadership so yes the restaurants that speaking you know speaking of our the restaurant tours you know if we're going to have an advantage over uh, our competition you know um angelo's and logan street and ivy and carboy and gold pan need to have an owner in place mm -hmm. that is setting the pace and getting people excited about the, the return of, uh, of our, our customers with, with or without masks when that time comes. But when, when, it, when it happens, you know, we're going to be there energetic, outgoing, enthusiastic, and setting, setting the example. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's an interesting thing to where <clears throat> kind of the pendulum swinging back from everybody. Let's really take care of our restaurants. Let's make sure that we're, we're double time in it to support them. Let's, and I think the pendulum is going to switch back to where it's like we better start looking at the guest. Yes. We better start. How do we pamper the guest? How do we create that experience? And, and so that's what I'm seeing as we head into spring and summer is like, oh, boy, we better not expect to be treated like we did during COVID, right? Which, Absolutely. So that, that's going to be one yeah, thing. You got, uh, yeah, you're 48 inches away from the customer and, you know, and you got the mask on and, and uh it, it just wasn't, you know, it didn't, you didn't have that great warm and fuzzy feeling of like why you go out to eat. You're going out to right. eat to have a good time with friends and family. And it was just, it was really weird for, for everyone. Well, and, and, and I think when you talk about the leadership, you know, part of that also has to be insulating your employees from the real bad stuff and the bad news. And, you know, yeah. you, you really have to, you know, have a, an approach of every day is really warm and sunny. Yeah. And, you know, when you get in the car, that's when you get in and go, darn it, or you go home yeah. and kick the yeah. dog, you know. I mean, right. it's, it's because, you know, and what that does, because really culture and morale are keys, <laughs> right? I mean. <laughs> yeah. That one got Jay. <laughs> but, but, you know, cult, culture and morale is, is, is really what, the key is yeah. going to be to the grassroots recovery. It I really just, is. I, I just don't think it, you better be ready for it because, <clears throat> honestly, the other day, and I'm, I don't like naming names with this, but this is just a, a, a portion of service that, that drives me crazy, and I believe it's due to COVID. Has had a server that just was not attentive to the table in the in the sense of like knew what I was going to say and just a little nuances of like I want some Don Julio, I want it in a rocks glass, and I want it up. Yeah. And so I come come back and I get the Don Julio in a glass with 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 ice in it, and it was just because she wouldn't take the time to listen to me. Yeah. Fully listen to me. It was like you're doing this and and trying to the, and, and it's like okay, so for me the tolerance is like oh it's COVID. You know, you got to do this. Yes. You know, can't use that dropping it off, and I'm out with my mom, and she <laughs> wants barbecue sauce for her for her sandwich, yeah. and you don't see the server for 
five, ten minutes after you get your food dropped off to you because some from the kitchen drops it off. So we're tolerant. We're, but be ready. Be ready because people be are going to start. Because you can't be making excuses. I mean, you get to that, you, you want to have that customer. culture there where, yeah, like, let's not blame COVID. Everybody's blaming COVID. Like, even when I was at the bank today, you know, I was getting pity cash, you know, and, uh, and uh, one of the customers asked if they could have a cup of coffee. And then the banker says, you know, we don't offer coffee right now because of COVID, you know, and your appointment's 45 minutes from now. Could you wait outside? You know, customers, you know, been hearing the excuses of COVID. And I think what you're making me think of right now is like, let's get ready. It's a to good figure conversation. Out to say yes. think? We got to start saying yes again. Let's. Let's stop saying no and blaming COVID. Listen, Let's start saying yes. Touch tables again. Yes. Um, and when you're allowed, you know, obviously, when, they, yeah. when, it's, when it's reasonable. Well, don't forget do the definition of hospitality. Well, it's a yeah. tough thing because already, I mean, pre-COVID, you, customers are not the easiest people to deal with in the first place, right? Yeah. You, you got that little leniency through COVID, and it was rah, 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 rah. But the culture shock of like, oh, man, we're hospitality once again. We're experiences. We're yes. smiles. We're listening. If you're not on point with that, your customer is going to pass you by and look for it. So yeah. I think that's a great thing. So it's just getting ready. And another thing you got to get ready for is are you ready for your kitchen? Are you ready for your staff? Are you ready for all of these things? And if you're looking to add to your restaurant, don't drag your knuckles right now, nope. right? What's nope. going on with the well, supply chain? Um, the, the global supply chain is really challenged right now. First of all, what do you do? Well, I'm a manufacturer's representative yes, for food are. service equipment and supplies. ElevationFS.com. That is Take correct. A look. Yeah. He's a local guy. He, you, you rep a lot of great brands. So great brands. Give some of the... Well, I mean, you know, Cambro is obviously uh, was, was, the, was the brand that put us into business. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, we represent all the Middleby brands, which is the largest manufacturer of food service equipment in the world. Mm-hmm. We have great independence, um, you know, as well. And so we're just very fortunate with the brands that we have. And we, we, uh, we work them all. And we're you're a great community. Community supporter. And oh, absolutely. So absolutely. A lot of people was like, oh, I know Rich O'Brien. He's yeah. my friend. He'll be able to get it done. But sometimes you're having to tell people now, hey, well, listen, I'm your Well, family. yeah. And, and Greg, I got to tell you, you know, with a lot of the challenges with stainless and components and uh, really, honestly, you've got a lot of the boats sitting off the shore in uh, Los Angeles Harbor without enough dock workers to unload them. So really what it is, is it's a, it's a culmination of a lot of things. And I feel very fortunate with the manufacturers we have. I mean, you know, Canberra is located in Huntington Beach, California. And in North Carolina where they have their manufacturing facilities, so they're not struggling with the lead times. Middleby being the premier leader in the globe, they actually have been able to manipulate a lot of, uh, of uh, cargo ships in order to get the supplies mm-hmm. that they had, so they're staying ahead of things in a very proactive way, but even with that, you know, we're still looking at 8 to 12 week lead times with some items, and we're also looking upwards of, you know, 15 weeks with others, and what's the irony of it is, we're having record months with our manufacturers, as far as um, as far as the the orders starting to come in, because people have a lot of money on the sidelines and they're ready to go. And so, to your point, what I have basically told everybody is, be prepared to wait just a little bit longer than you you have, because building the stock up just hasn't been happening. So we're not we're not able to just ship things right away uh, from a metal standpoint. Now, again, I bring up Cambro because they're um, their plastics manufacturer, and really um, they've been spot on. They haven't had any issues whatsoever. So when it comes to to those type of products, we're taking advantage of the fact that we can get those to people. And then with the ones that we're challenged on, we're trying to read ahead of the development schedules. Uh-huh. So it's working. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. God. It's I, tough, though. Yeah. You, you, you juggle chainsaws all the time. I don't know how you do it. You have so many different projects. But with the, the consensus of the Craig Jones model is put great people around you. Because great people are going to make things flourish. 100%. I love that about you. You really oh, do. Gosh. Yeah. You do a great job with that. So uh, we're going to go jump in and talk to some of the great people here at Logan Street and Carboy on Logan Street. Chef Rebecca Weisman, she's going to show us the, uh, it's the tostada bar, right? Yeah, she's going to show you that <laughs> wood-fired tostada bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's lunchtime, man, and I, it takes everything in my power to not start drinking Carboy wine. Everything. There should be Carboy on the, uh, wine on the table right now. Solid. But there's plenty of time for that. I don't know if Jay showed the patio, but you got a palatial patio out here on Logan Street. I love it. Just the people watching, sitting down here. When things are popping off, things are popping off. And this spring and summer, I know it. All you got to do is get ready. It's no, we're no longer in the get ready to get ready stage. We're in the get ready stage get because ready. It's, it's here, coming, man. Thank you so much for your time today, Craig. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's good to see you, Greg. Oh, yeah. My God. Yeah, it's great to Craig be here. Jones, we're going to do a lot. Odell? Yep. Spice guy? 
coming up here is, uh, oh, yeah, we got a lot of great stuff in store for you here. Breakaway will come back to Logan Street and Carboy on a beautiful Wednesday, getting ready for um, the crack of the bat tomorrow. Lodo, downtown. That's going to be a big deal. All right, get back out there. Support your local restaurants. Hey, you guys. Jay here with the Modern Eater Show. Thanks for watching. Don't forget about our YouTube and Instagram channels. A lot of killer content over there. Throw us a subscribe on YouTube. Throw us a follow on Instagram. And thank you for supporting TME. We couldn't do this without our amazing sponsors, so let's check them out right now. Very proud to be part of the, the Modern Eater. And uh, chefs, restaurant owners, any food service operators... You know, I know right now that uh, delivery and carry out is bigger than ever, and we got you covered. Uh, Cambro uh, has a full line of uh, delivery and carry out items. More economical options are expanded polypropylene or EPP, a uh, nice insulated container. Uh, the ProCard Ultra is really versatile. It's a great unit because you could actually store cold products down here, hot products up here. It's all 120. There's no refrigeration worries. It's all thermodynamics. Just let us know what your food service challenges are, what it is we can do to help you out, and there isn't anything that we can can't do for you. So uh, hope to see you over here at our facility in Park Hill soon and uh, stay safe out there. You know everybody with several million dollars of hard assets here insurance is very very important to us. Ewing Levitt covers it all. Machinery, building, workman's comp. Ewing Levitt's got us covered from the floor to the ceiling, from our alley even to the street. This divider, this press, my cooling conveyor, my oven. Ow, ow. Ewing Levitt covers our counter stacker and our employees too. If you need insurance, take it from Little Rich at Rockalitas. Call Ewing Levitt, they'll get you covered. Hey, this is Keegan from D-Bar in Denver. You guys might find it difficult to stay in touch and stay up to date with the ever-changing culinary scene in Colorado. It's impossible. Just tune in to the Modern Eater. These guys have their fingers on the pulse of what's happening in all of the food and beverage in all of Colorado. They're behind us. They understand the idea of shopping local and shopping small. To support them, you support us. Hey guys, Alex Armitas over at Sam's Number 3 Glendale. You want a Bloody Mary? You want a cheeseburger? You want a breakfast burrito? Greek salad? Bacon gyro meat? Chicken souvlaki? Barbecue ranch salad? We got you covered. Come down and see us. One more time. Try it again. Hey guys, Alex Armitas over here at Sam's Number 3 Glendale. Now get your ass to themoderneater.com. Thank you so much. Modern Eater, we love you guys. This is Amber with Northern Colorado Potatoes, reminding everyone that potatoes grown here are truly rooted in love and rooted in a long history of being grown in this area. Early 1900s reports show that this was either the largest or one of the largest potato producing areas in the nation. Other states have had some amazing branding, but don't forget we have all your favorite varieties and more you love to cook and eat, including russets. Support local potatoes, you won't be disappointed. We started Meridium Spirits because we love the way that spirits and cocktails can bring people together to socialize, to bond, to have conversations. Well, right now we've got some big conversations to have. 
Coop Vodka and Coop Gin are available at liquor stores across the metro area. But if you can't find us or would like to have us behind your bar or at your restaurant, send us an email, info at meridiumspirits.com. We know things are a little different these days, but think of us the next time you're planning a virtual happy hour or a socially distant picnic. And keep an eye on our social media, Coop by Meridium, for all the latest and greatest. Hey guys, it's Caroline Glover. I'm the chef owner of Annette out at Stanley Marketplace. Citrus is about to be in its prime. I just want to thank everybody for showing so much support to small local restaurants in this really hard time. And you're watching the Modern Eater Show. <laughs> I'm fine with that. All right, you guys, back to the show in just a second. I'm here in Colorado Springs with Chef Noah Siebenhaller, and we're here to tell you about bread and specifically Aspen Baking. Aspen Baking Company has been baking the best bread in Colorado since 1994. Chef, I know you use Aspen Baking Company here. What do you use here? Why do you like it? So um, I use their sourdough, their French Parisian, their burger rolls, marble rye, and slider rolls. Um, I, I was introduced about three and a half years ago, and I haven't found a better bread in Colorado since. So we use it for exclusively for everything. I'm telling you what, you guys, don't take my word for it. Take Chef Noah's. They're making quality product. They don't put in the, 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 the fake colors. They don't put in the chemicals. They don't freeze it. They don't do that stuff. They just bake fresh bread. Aspenbaking.com is where you go to get that bread. And uh, now back to the show. All right, this is going to be sensory overload, but it's going to be really fun. <laughs> We've got a, a lot of part going on here, lots of moving parts. First of all, I want to introduce Joe. How are you doing, Joe? Hi, guys. Good to well, see you. Thanks for having us here. Absolutely. Yeah, Logan Street, on Logan Street, attached to Carboy as well, Chef Rebecca Weissman. Good to see you. Hi, nice to see you, too. Welcome. All right, uh, you guys, first of all, what is today? Tostada Tuesday. Tostada With Tuesday. With Tito Malaga. <laughs> That's right. And we got some good food right here and some good friends as well. This is as local as you could possibly get, Chef Rebecca. You love to use local ingredients as much as possible, don't you? I do. We try and feature as much stuff as we can. And these are all purveyors that we use a lot of their things to inspire us for these great tostadas. So it should be fun. I feel like this is to tell the truth. Okay, who here works with spices? Is it you? Oh, you all just gave it away right away. We were going to have <laughs> you plead your case on why you work with Spice. Have you ever seen the show before? These are the three contestants that are stepping up. Who'd like? I'll just do the introductions right here. And from uh, Odell, and this is a great new brand, All Kind Hard Kombucha. It's good to see you, Mary Beth. Hello. You're going to make a tostada for us? I'm going to make a tostada. Or you have a game plan? Well. You know what your action is? I like color, and I like freshness, just like the kombucha can say. So I'm going to stick to something bright, fresh. I love it. Don't, don't give away your strategy here, because we are going to look at this. And obviously, all subjectors, no winners, winners no losers. <laughs> but uh, from the Spice Guy, and Danny, good to see you again. Good to see always. you. Uh, what, how about you? What? Uh, well, I did, I did one earlier. I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm feeling pretty confident with, with what I came up with. <laughs> Mountain Man Micro Farms and Andy, good to catch up with you once again. Yeah, as well. yeah. You got your strategy planned out? Yeah, I think uh, the Mountain Man's gonna come out, and I'm gonna use some rabbit meat and uh, yeah, do a little experimenting with it. <laughs> now I heard rabbit meat. What, Chef Rebecca? Where do you get these I great know. ingredients? First of all, uh, uh, Chef, there's no proper way to put this together, right? It's it's what you like and have fun, or is there? What's a traditional tostada? Uh, well, I mean, we obviously tostada, when you think about it, is traditional Mexican flavors, which I love all of those kind of bright combination of spicy and acidic and tons of vegetables. And so we've tried to incorporate what we do here at Logan Street, which is a little bit of seasonal and Mediterranean inspired, and incorporate that into our tostadas. So they're flavors that you're used to, but with just using a little bit start. different ingredients. Fantastic. Every Who knows? Tuesday. Yeah. Who knows what we're, uh, Tuesday. Two dollars off all what we're day. supposed to do. Every yeah. tostada minus the lobster and tostada. And you're not going to come you back here and make your own tostada at all, but come in here, order it, have a great time. And just in Logan Street, another one of the great <laughs> events that you guys put on here. So here we go. They're getting ready. It's tostada making time. I love to do this type of stuff at home, too. Don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I'm always experimenting with uh, a taco of some sort or a tostada. Like That's Jaime. Food. He's our tostada master. To do. Let's, let's do the play-by-play. -play. Squeeze on. Remember that? Do you remember that show? I Iron Chef? <laughs> Squeeze on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We've got right now the... Um, 
Mountain Man Micro Farms and Andy. He's been putting down himself a nice layer of guacamole first. What do we have um, Danny doing? Go give us a play-by-play on that. Oh, one. yeah. Rebecca. Some uh, guacamole he's going pr- here. He's dividing uh, here. I forget. This is a, a special jam. Yeah, that that's Rebecca's a guava made. jam that we made with uh, guava, guava paste. And then what do you got going on over here, Danny? I've got some pickled tomatoes. And then I've got some of my cream that I brought from home, which is using our guacamole maker. Oh, cool. Which is pretty awesome. It's just sour cream and guacamole maker, and that's it. And, uh, and then some chicken so far. So does that have avocado in it, or that the avocado is in the spice mix? It's, there is not avocado in it. You just add avocado to that, and you're all set, basically. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I have a feeling that um, Andy's is going to be microgreens heavy. <laughs> it's just a feeling that. And Good then, guess. And then, Mary Beth, you kind of seem like you're planning your strategies as you go along here, there. right? Well, I'm going to try to do a veggie one since the boys are putting meat on them. Nice. But I did add a protein, the white beans. They're like a refried. Yeah, we'd make like a classic refried beans, but with white Great Northern Tuscan beans. Yeah, and then after that, I'm just going to pick the brightest colors I can see and load it up. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, so, Chef, more is less. Less is more. How do you pr- uh, do? You want to kind of keep simple ingredients, like stick with two or three or four, or where where do you go with that? The way that we try and do them here is we try and incorporate. You have some type of a acidity, some type of a creaminess, some type of a spice, and some type of a texture. Like aside from the um, textural element of the tostada itself. So we um, usually four, and then a green will be like a fifth component. But we have some that only have three. Depends what the ingredients are. Whatever highlights it the best. I don't know, Joe. You kind of approach it like a pizza, right? Yeah, I guess that's what you call it. I mean, since uh, you know, I grew up in uh, the Italian family, but uh, <laughs> he's like, let's fight. <laughs> no, don't do that. But again. uh, um, no, yeah, topping yeah, wise, yeah, exactly. you yeah. got the yeah. I mean, you gotta. You just, oh, it's awesome. You put whatever What's you this want one on here? it, but it's you know, the way Chef Rebecca does Joe. it is, you know, like you we just said before, so simple, much of that. simple ingredients, and but just quality ingredients. Good. So when she Thank does you. all of her tostadas here, I mean, we sell a ton of them on a daily basis, especially on Tostada Tuesday. This is local supporting local, yeah, right? I feel bad here. for the people I, I love that this can, uh, I, I can't eat great. cilantro. But I, I do want to see. Like oh, and you haven't even gotten to the market. I haven't yeah. even gotten to the greens okay, yet. Okay, we'll, we'll wait with that. Listen, beautiful touch on that one. I mean, you throw that. You got to have a little edible flower on there. It is springtime and all. <laughs> so as far as uh, Mountain Man Micro Farms goes, that's what you specialize in. Talk about uh, Mountain Man right now and some of the great uh, things that you can provide to chefs all over town. Yeah, um, I uh, I grow thirty plus varieties of of microgreens, all greenhouse grown down in. Uh, frank town outside of castle rock how do you know what to grow is it feedback is it what you like how do you know what to throw in there uh a little bit of everything a, a lot of it is feedback you know that's how i add new varieties um to the list and uh sometimes i just look for things that just look different or unique with different colors and leaf shapes and what is chefs like what are chefs asking for they want everything <laughs> rebecca um, is everything that true? You from, want everything? Yeah. Or there are a few things that you know like <laughs> I've, I've, I'm kind of, I always am asking for stuff, uh, special things. You know, they're, I mean, they all have, they, they're very beautiful, but they, they all, all have a have place have in such, your heart. Yes. They do. And they all have different like flavors and colors. And for instance, nasturtion are one of my favorite ingredients ever. So these are a really cool thing that Andy started growing last year that we buy a, a lot of um but all these greens because they're so uh concentrated in flavor they add a lot of different things to each one so it's not like you can just have one and use it all over well at least i don't like to but. agreed what's your best seller um honestly with all the different chefs that we have in denver and all the different kinds of you know cuisines it it's really hard to pinpoint it varies quite a bit but I mean, everybody wants, you know, a lot. Right now, shiso is a big one. Um, cilantro and basil and all the herbs are always up there. For sure. Radishes have a good Now, are you flavor. food service only, or are you within um, the, a consumer base, too, through groceries? Yeah, I sell uh, direct to consumer as well. Um, and uh, I'm also in some Whole Foods stores 
awesome. uh, right now as well. That's fantastic. So local distributors for food service is how you'd get that? The big three, I'm sure you'd probably get them. Um, I actually do all the delivering. Oh, you do? Yeah. Man. I do everything. I love to hear that. <laughs> I plant it, water it, grow it, deliver it. That's what small um, business is all about, yeah. truly. Man, good for you. That's great. But any opportunity that you want, you know, just ask for it. I think you probably get it. Your brand is really well known and it held in high esteem. Chefs everywhere, far and wide, go get those. And then to see that direct with consumer, that's pretty cool too, man. And yeah. you go drop it off. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh Hey yeah. Uh, it's cr- I mean I'm hiring, so if you're in Are you really? <laughs> there is a position open. That's, but um That's fantastic. What yeah. how would you call what would you call that position? Just utility um, player? It's gonna be a, a greenhouse growing position, so nice. You'll be doing all the fun stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um you don't like bland food. I I mean I don't, but that's where spice is coming to play. And uh, Danny, you get you guys do so well with the Spice Guy. What a just a respected, great brand for sure. Uh, the relationship with you guys and the Spice Guy, you're you're providing spices to yep. people far and wide. It's been great, actually. I think Rebecca met uh, Zach uh, doing a modern eater, and uh, cool. And the rest is history. Yeah, we work together every week with all all sorts of different things, uh, everything from spices to nuts, whatever whatever chef rebecca needs that's so cool and chef rebecca we've had these conversations you call you go hey how can we support you we love you you and jay you know the modern eater how do i support you and i say hey just use some of the local products that we talk about that kind of thing you say hey done and done let's get some good stuff but you can't just do business with local people because they have a product it has to be great too and spice guy great product right amazing products i was telling him earlier that a lot of the I'll just order random stuff from them, and then I figure out what I'm going to make with it after, like after tasting oh, it. A lot of our tostada features have been inspired by some of their really cool spice blends. So it's like really the, uh, we had one that we did. We got this like green mole powder, and we ended up doing a crushed um, a crushed uh, pumpkin seed and green mole spice, and did like a spice crusted tuna tostada that w- we couldn't really keep in. We sold a ton of it. That was really fun. We did a goat birria with some of these special chilies we have a lamb chorizo on the menu with these really unique yellow peppers that they get from oaxaca so like really fun ingredients i haven't used before so that's kind of cool it's kind of cool to talk to these guys because their knowledge base is so vast i mean they're spice geeks really spice nerds which is fan i mean always just searching the globe for the best of the best and uh, one of the things act is when we find what we like we buy it all that's all. the goal, yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the goal to do that. So another great Colorado brand, but consistency is everything. You want that consistency in your kitchen, and uh, that's what these two fellas bring you as well. Here's another cool thing: with any great uh, meal, you got to have a great beverage, right? This is what I really admire. Again, another great Colorado brand and all kind hard kombucha. Sometimes, Joe, first of all, are you a kombucha drinker, Joe? I like kombucha. Chef uh, buys me some every some, other week. Yeah. Some people, you go, first of all, you say to some people, and you say, kombucha, they go, you get that dull stare of the dairy cow, like, kombucha, what? And then other people are just like, that's all I drink. It's like, I don't drink soda anymore. I love kombucha. That's my deal. And I always go, well, man, I need a hard kombucha. There's there's a couple out there. But for Odell to recognize in the market, the kombucha, it, listen, watch out. So here's a new brand. It's called All Kind Hard Kombucha. You go across the top here. It's a SCOBY fermented, probiotic. Yep, 100% employee owned. Cool. You got to love that. Um, you've got, um, uh, and, and as I look at this, all the ingredients, this is all natural stuff. This is goodness for your body. And if you get a little bit of a treat with it, fantastic. Talk about this product if you don't mind. Yeah, so All Kind is a new line of kombucha. We have the super berry, the tropical turmeric, and the juicy citrus. Um, all USDA organic and certified gluten free. Tropical turmeric. Now these are code words in there. If you know about mm-hmm. turmeric, you know about turmeric, yeah. and and the holistic properties that that's going to offer you as well. Yeah. But your flavors look like they'd be right up my alley. Yeah, they're uh, super berry. These are all yeah. things that I like. Continue on. So yeah, I'm they correct. pack a good punch of flavor without being overly sweet. Like the super berry has just a little hint of ginger to cut it and uh, finish almost like on a drier note. So it's really good with food, fresh foods, any foods really. But, um, and then since we brew with kindness, 1% of all the revenue of all kind goes back to charities that are, um, conscious about the environment. So you get to drink and be charitable when you drink it. 
So how would you guys, and I'm going to do this 30-second elevator speech for each and every one of your businesses because we love to – Jay, you want to take a break? All right, because that, that's a great opportunity. We're going to come back. We're going to take a break. You want to hear about local businesses? 30 seconds uh, each for each one saying, here's why you should do business with us. This is what we have to offer. We'll do that. And also the unveiling of the tostadas. And, Joe, you're going to be our palate, right? Yes, I am. You're going to help us out the, and taste that as well. This can be exciting. We'll come back. We'll unveil. Hey, don't show them yet, Jay. What are you doing? <laughs> Stop that. All right, let's break away. We'll come right back. We're at Logan Street on a beautiful Wednesday. Yes, it's Wednesday. Um, the Modern Eater Show continues. Hi, I'm Amber with Strohauer Farms, and I'm just here to remind you that the best potatoes are grown here in Colorado. Goodness elevated. Thanks for watching The Modern Eater Show. Hey, Zach Kreider here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado, your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey, restaurants, we're glad you're reopening from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. <laughs> First, we partner with the best farmers in the world, and then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguyco.com. Hey Modern Eater fans, I'm Don Trobo with The Annex by Art at Mills, and I just wanted to give you a heads up about some of the great things we've got going on locally in the state. We're headquartered right here, and we're working with farmers in the San Luis Valley to bring you amazing Colorado quinoa. It's just like the South American stuff, but grown locally. We've got transitional wheat flour that's grown by farmers in Colorado and surrounding states who are in the process of, of turning their fields into organic. So we're taking that transitional wheat and turning into flour, and now it's available for you to cook and bake with. And last but not least, we're now cleaning grain berries in Denver. So things like spelt or wheat berries uh, or pearl barley, those are things that we're now doing right here locally and are available to you. Can't wait to share it with you. Making education cool again, Jay. You know how? Culinary Quick Start Program. We are in love. They're using Studio Kitchen Colorado Monday through Thursday. If you have any desire to get into culinary or you're just sharpening your skills, I'm telling you, these guys, Chef Blake, Chef Marcus, they're instructing a course. And I've been there the past couple of nights, and this course is cool. It's informative, it's innovative, and it has the modern eater touch on it. You can tune into this as well, but you have to sign up for the course. If you go to themoderneater.com, you'll see it on the top navigation bar. It's a drop down. Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start. All of the stuff that we're doing and sign up information is right there for you. It's a gimme. It's free to you. It's like the cooking classes you pay for. Don't pay for them anymore. You just sign up. And what is the best part of this thing? We got jobs for you. The troops are rallying. The community's getting together. And there's a baseline. So restaurants, if you want to get involved, you're a restaurant tour. You can get involved because we need you and you to support this program with your skills so what does that entail this entails getting together and having a job seminar for these students it's going to be a baseline you need a baseline of knowledge for your students for when they come in you know they're going to be able to handle a line in a kitchen 
So get involved. If you have any interest in signing up and being a student for this class, you can't get in on this three weeks, but the following three weeks you can get in on. Again, sign up, themoderneater.com. You'll see Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start. But we want you to join the revolution of making education cool again. Okay, back to Elevation Food Service reps. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Nations from Aspen Baking Company. It's really important right now to support local. That's why I support the Modern Eater. Now, back to the show. Okay, this is the best time I've had all week, and why not? It's Tostada. Uh, Tostada Tuesday on... On Wednesday. <laughs> makes sense, but yes, it is Tuesday. We recorded this on Tuesday and playing it today on Wednesday. Chef Rebecca Weissman, this is fun. It's kind of cool to have these projects. And not too many people that have a designated Tostada bar inside of their restaurant. It's really fun. We have a, definitely have a good time with it, apparently. So do they. Yeah. So it's cool. I love it. Uh, and Joe, you're our official taster, taste tester. Perfect. I love that. And again, live music on Tuesdays. Live music Tuesdays. Uh, we have uh, a flamenco player every other Tuesday and a guy named Roberto that does, you know, some, you know, Spanish covers and just gets the, the crowd going. And then uh, our... Uh, Frozen sangria and margarita back on. Oh, she's so. fine. I mean, you'd spend all day and afternoon here. You guys open the doors at what time? Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Coming on down at three o'clock. All right, here's what we're going to do. Local guys here with us, guys and gals, and uh, just local supporting local, and that's how we like to do it here in uh, Colorado. Okay, first up with the tostada, we're going to go to Mountain Man Micro Farms and Andy McArdle. Come on up and present your tostada. And um, as Joe is giving it some flavor samplings, and again, this is all subjective, no winners, no <laughs> losers, but as far as Mountain Man Micro Farms, give us the 30 seconds of uh, what you guys do and why you should do business with you. Yeah, um, you know, Mountain Man's been growing microgreens in the Denver area for the last five years. Um, we expand our product line through, you know, ideas from chefs and Kind of create flavors with the microgreens from your guys' suggestions. And, uh, um, you know, if you want something grown by the farmer, delivered by the farmer, um, we'd love to work with you. We deliver from Colorado Springs all the way up to Boulder. So You mean you do? I do, yeah. <laughs> he make, does. <laughs> make these guys, make make him so busy yeah. that uh, he's got to start adding jobs. Yep. Which is cool. I started at 2 a.m. <laughs> Today? Oh, yeah. That was last night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for coming with us. We appreciate having there's you only, here. Uh, first of all, there's only one 5 o'clock in the day for me, and it's not in the morning. That's <laughs> all I have to say with that. Joe, dig in. Dig in. What am I eating here, Andy? Yeah, so you got a uh, specialty tostada here. It's the Mountain Man version. It's got avocado, some of uh, Rebecca's specialty jam. Um, a microgreen salad, and it's garnished with a nice little nasturtium flower on top. What's the the meat? Uh, rabbit meat, Ooh. the most important part. All right, how do you approach this? Are you going to be dainty I, about it? Do you no, fold it in just half? dig in. Just you dig in. Get That's it. how you got to get, get, get the side with, you know, has most of the stuff on there. <laughs> he left the flower. I would have tried to get that whole flower into my mouth. The flowers <laughs> are amazing. The flowers yeah. later, huh? It cleanses the palate at the end. <laughs> what kind of microgreens did you use or just a bunch of them? Um, yeah, in that in that mix, there's uh, there's some Mizuna mustards, a couple varieties of radish, and uh, red amaranth. Mary Beth, what would you have yeah. paired that with? A little spicy mix. Yeah, there's some spice in there. Yeah. I think the turmeric would really? go well with that, with just the rabbit. I think give it a little, that turmeric gets a little spice in the drink, so... Want to give it a whirl? Yeah, we'll try a little taster. Knock it out <laughs> Have you had this before? I, I don't know which one they brought in. I can't remember, but... So I this might be the made of, maiden voyage with you right now. All right, here we go. There you go. Thank you, sir. Another one? Cheers. All right. Cheers. Cheers. So you've got that tostada. It's uh, etched in your brain. Yeah. Oh, you have tickets now. i got to take another bite. <laughs> I know. It's okay. See, that's for me. What a just a great consistent flavor throughout that. That is fantastic. Great. Oh my goodness, and a great little kicker at the end with the uh, with the oh, alcohol. Oh, with the guava. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. 
it was so good. Joe's losing his napkins over, <laughs> over there. All right, um, contestant number two, Danny. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And so the Spice Guy. Now, if you watch or listen to the Modern Eater, you hear about the Spice Guy all the time, and what a great organization and brand. But the Spice Guy is kind of plural. Right, it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's, and there's also a couple of, of, of spice gals in there, but the overall brand is called the Spice Guy. Correct. Right, uh, local great brand that it sources ingredients indigenous to the um, parts of the world that those varieties of ingredients would That's would correct. live. That's correct. And so, talk about the Spice Guy, thirty second, and why you should do business with the Spice Guy. Uh, the Spice Guy, actually, a lot like Andy, is an opportunity for every individual to have. Uh, spices. We do tons of restaurants, we do tons of co-packing, and then we do retail stuff. So if you're buying four ounces of a product or if you're buying 500 pounds of it, we kind of take care of everybody in that range. And we're using the best quality products we can possibly use that are sourced from the best the best places. I love it. Do you have a barbacant on you? I do not have one on me. Man, I just ran out. I, it's so good. It is. It's terribly good. And yeah. I put it on my salmon. I grill up my salmon, and it's just my one-stop shop. I'll just go across it. And, I think uh, this. I think this might be your your new. Really? What do you got there? So this is Korean red rub. I see. And I, that's delicious as well. This is. I actually use that for the chicken Ooh, that nice. he is going to try here. It is a excellent barbecue blend. It's uh, <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things to pair with short ribs. Wait, what was? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Don't make about. me shake you down. <laughs> I know. Uh, great, great stuff. And truly, you sell them like these. But there's a lot of folks around town that support the Spice Guy. And you can find these in, like, Proud Souls, Barbecue, and Provisions. Yep. You can buy the Spice Guy so boutique shops, that type of thing. Yep. Uh, but if you really want to get some the Spice Guy spices, where are you going to get them at? Right now, at this point, it's still online is the best direction to go. Online. We don't have our storefront open yet with uh, COVID. And but majorly convenient to order online. Yep, I mean, you're going to get them right away. Door. Also, get their newsletter because I'll give you tips and recipes. I, think I love the spice. Yep, you guys, get to so. see my hands in a lot of those videos. Yeah. You know, it's you. But food service distribution as well. Yeah, of yeah, course. For sure. Cool. Best, one of the best. I mean, truly one of the best Colorado brands, hands down, period. So thank you. All right, describe yep, your you. tostada to Joe. Okay, yeah. so I did, like I said, I used a Korean red rub, which is a, it's a Korean red chili. So I braised the chicken. I did this all last night for you. Oh, this nice. Is, yeah, a whole nother level. Then I used some of, uh, you know, I'm, used, of course, using my own products here. The holy guacamole I paired with the uh, aioli that I made. And then I stole some pickled onions and some awesome microgreen cilantro here. Okay. And that's it. Enjoy. All right. Digging in again. All right. Murder that one, Joe. That was a good bite. That was a good bite. Is that where you would have started on that one, Danny? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the, I go for the best bite. That the, was the, the yeah. rest I'm not worried that's about. Right. Yeah. You like that one. Yeah, that's really I good. can tell. Is it the spices, though? I think it's the spice. <laughs> uh, I'm just a, I, like, I like spicy. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, this Korean red rub is very good with that chicken. Great. So, and then with a the little bit of the smoothness with the avocado there. So yeah. It's very nice. I think so. he, you got Joe right where yeah. you, where you <laughs> needed to be. So. All right, Mary Beth, which one would you have paired with that? Which one of these kombuchas? Oh, let's huh? give him That's the... pretty spice forward. <laughs> Maybe the, the super berry. It's probably the most dry of the three, give, so it give might that one be good. Super berry. All right. Super you, berry. You drank the rest of that one, so you got a <laughs> clear cla- glass. Yeah. All right. Really awesome with spice. Yeah. I don't know, Joe. We could do this for a living, right? Oh, yeah. oh, I do do it for a living. <laughs> yeah. Weird. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, definitely dry on there. You gotta take a little bite. Oh my god, that is so good. Can I get a case of this? Where can I find <laughs> I'll talk to you about these Absolutely. in a second we'll talk here. Hang, after. On. hang on, hang on. You good with that one? Yeah. All right. Ready for the next presentation? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Danny. Of course. Appreciate it. I don't know. I think Danny's going to be tough to beat on this one. Yeah. Uh, Joe, tell me a secret. I don't think it's a contest. No. No. They're, everything's good here. So. They're like children. All, all solid, yeah. Mary Beth, come on over here. Here comes the tostada. Mary Beth Jungers. Odell Brewing, but a, a, a brand that should and will stand alone. It's all kind. I like that. All kinds. Mm-hmm. That's so many references to that. Make it how you want to make it in your own brain, but it is all kind. It'll be all kind to you, right? Absolutely. Okay, all kind hard kombucha 
We tried the super berry. We tried the uh, turmeric. What's the turmeric mixed with? So the juicy citrus is left to try. Okay, I think we've we've uh, narrowed it down on what the yeah. <laughs> the, the next try so is going to be. Juicy citrus is going to go with your toast out of here. It seems like. I suppose so. All right, do this. Why do we want to go pick this up? Where can we find it? And um, just give that thirty second. Sure. Pitch. Well, you can find it anywhere now. Argonauts, even to the smaller liquor stores. Um, I think it's a great alternative with all the seltzers and ciders that have been introduced. It's a, it's something new to the market, and Agreed. I think it'll be great this summer. Um, so we start with great products, all that organic, fresh fruits. And then after that comes the community aspect and giving back, and it's all with kindness. So it's a great brand to drink. You know, here's where I see your growth with this product right here, truly, as I think about it. Man, I'm not saying forget White Claw, but... <laughs> Forget white cloth, and here's why. I mean, truly, the after the after flavors, the the unnatural flavors that you get, and that kind of that um, waxy, yeah, feel, you don't get that with this, but you're still getting that kind of light mm -hmm. feel and to it. And I think that that's a segment of population to where let's get those drinkers a little bit better of a palate yeah. because and I don't think they'll turn back. There's still all over 6% alcohol, too, so they still yeah. pack a punch. I, I saw that, the 6.5. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like to diminish one product for another product, but truly this stands out. Uh, this is going to be a class leader. So yes. Congratulations on that. Thank it's fantastic. You. So you can look for it in all of your leading Absolutely. local we're, stores? Um, we're in about 21 states as of now, and then we're hoping this product to go nationwide. So It will. Rock on with that. All right, let's talk about your tostada. Okay, so this is your veggie option. So you got the like guacamole smash and then those refried white beans, some pickled onions. These apples have serranos to give you the spice. Yeah. And then you've got some yeah. like crispy prosciutto Must for change. a little salt kick on top. <laughs> the normal routine. All right. Squeeze some lime on you. Yeah. Better. I would have been so mad at you. <laughs> you there we go. Up that line. All right. So you got the acid. The rest of these guys chose. Oh, I appreciate you inviting me. It's heavy. Is it heavy? <laughs> We'll try that with the juicy. Yeah. Talk to me, Joe. You got a mouthful. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would hate to eat on Yeah, you get the meaty of the avocado, <laughs> the beans, yeah. and then you get that crunch of the prosciutto and the yeah. apples, and then the spice hits you right in the end. All right. Uh, I'm getting the spice right now. Getting a little. You layered <laughs> that out. Warm in there. You layered that baby out, and great job that's, with that's the good. meatless option. Yeah. yeah, I'm. Here's what I'm gonna have to say: is they all stand up on their own flavor. Yeah, their own look and flavor, and that goes full circle back to what we did in the beginning. No right way or wrong way to make a tostada. Just absolutely. have good, delicious ingredients, and make sure your palate likes it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what you can get every Tuesday Woo. right here at Logan Street and Carboy. Uh, <laughs> Serranos are spicy. <laughs> it's a hitter. Yeah. I'm I going pretty good with spice, but they're they're good. I said to Mary Beth, I, I said I it, that looks like it needs to have a, a yeah. tequila next to yeah. it. Yeah, no, I can't do tequila yet. Oh, you can't? No. Well, not now. No, not now. But just like, in yeah, general. just if you had this in general, then yeah. you can have one. Yeah, so. you're on the clock. <laughs> but I'll do the kombucha. There we go. Cheers. Cheers. What a great product! Thanks for introducing this to us. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. These are all different, too, in yeah. their own right. I love how it's just very bright, crisp, and you can tell they're all natural flavors. Absolutely. You're really not getting those aftertastes with that. Um, everyone's a winner. Absolutely. Nobody, it's, nobody it's, like six, it's like sixth grade, uh, what do they call that, field day. <laughs> field day. <laughs> yeah. you, you didn't have sixth grade field day? I can't the remember. long jump. The Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I won them all. You, you want them all? Yeah. yeah. So. Well, everybody <laughs> won them all these days. Back in our days, it was cutthroat. Yes, it was. A trip Joe going over the long <laughs> jump. I appreciate each and every one of your time, but what did we learn from today? Do business locally. We have a bunch of great products, a bunch of great brands, and this is where you go eat at your local neighborhood restaurant while you're reforming your habits and things starting to loosen back up. Yeah. Things are good. Things are getting great. I mean, it's just... I love to hear. With the, the weather being the way it is, I mean, my... Day, but uh -huh. still looks like it's. We're just 
on the up, 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 keep going up, man. It's it's awesome. So when you look around at people that do things right, it's right here. And the leadership team, uh, the things that you guys have assembled, just quality, 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 all the way around. I love the events that you guys do. None better. Chef Rebecca, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Such a great job. It was really yeah, fun. Absolutely. So for Jay Parker, who did such a great job today as well, Craig Jones, who joined us a little bit earlier, Rich O'Brien from L. Food service reps. The Spice Guy, Danny, coming here today with us. Thank you. For sure. Mountain Man, Micro Farms, and Andy Bartle, thank you as well. And this new kombucha, which I think this is going to be my next stop. I'm going to head to my favorite local liquor store and pick up all kind kombucha. And thank you, Mary Beth, as well. Rebecca, right on. Joe. Thank As you always. All. Thank, Thank you for you coming. Greg. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Wrap it up here. We'll continue on. We got a special one for you. Opening day. Yes, we'll be there. Blake Street Tavern Tavern in the middle of the action. It's going to be kind of different. We haven't experienced stuff like that for quite some time. But as you know, the swing of the bat, that's happening on a beautiful spring Colorado day. There's a sense of normalcy back in the air, and we all need that so yes. much. Let's let the COVID fatigue wear off. Treat each other well. Let's get back to it. Got some hard work to do, but most important, delicious food and beverage. That's what we do. The Modern Eater Show continues.